How's it going? Welcome to the shop. Hope you're having a great day. Man, the last 10 days knocked me out. I'm finally feeling better. Got me a new respirator and all that. Let's get on this heat treat oven build. Are you ready? Here we go. Welcome back. So just to be safe, I got a new respirator, new filters, everything new. I'm gonna try to do everything I can to avoid being sick. And for you guys that are regulars on the live stream, sorry I missed yesterday, which was Sunday. I wanted to make sure I was 100% before I got back in the shop and got working and all that. And I know the live streams, I get really riled up, so I didn't want to make it more dangerous and, and, and get sick again. Anyway, I got shirts like this on my website, which are on the link down below with Amazon links and up here in the cards if you use them. Like if you like, dislike if you don't like it. Either way, that lets me know what's going on. Subscribe if you like what you see and join the community. Let's get on to this build. So, finally, we're back here. Now, before we want to do anything, if you haven't watched the first part of this, I'll link it up in the cards and down below so you can catch up to here. Now, what we're going to have to do is here's our floor. So, we're going to have to mark our line where we want to, you know, that's the lowest point we can go. And also, on the back, we're going to want to line these two up, get it all straightened out, and see how much we're going over here. If you want, you can make these straight. Make sure they're straight on both sides. We got six inches on the bottom, so we should have about six inches on the top. Yeah, six inches right there. So, we're going to want to hang these bricks over here. So, we're going to want to line here. And we're going to want to line here. Now, now we got our bottom line. All right, so we don't need these bottom three anymore. We can put these aside for now. All we really need are these three right here. We don't need the top either. That was just for the B-roll shot. <laughs> we're definitely gonna want some kind of straight edge. I'll be honest with you, we're gonna have to cut these because the way uh, the heat builds and all that, it goes by resistance. You can't have them together like this, and you can't have them too far apart. Now for these, it says, uh, it says 100 inches, or 110 inches to 210 inches. Once I get all, because I can only have one, two, three lanes. So it's gonna go one, then on the back, and then on the front, and I calculated it's gonna be roughly 100 inches. That means we're 10 inches short. So we're gonna have to cut one side of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it out to an even, you know, probably like 160 or 170 so they're all evenly pulled out. And then I'm going to take a string to measure it and we'll cut it and loop it through. Because what I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to come in the top of one, go around, round and round, and then come out the bottom of the other side. Which is a little dangerous. We'll have to make sure there's some way it's covered so you don't touch the bottom one or don't touch the top one. On my other oven, I had it coming in through the back, which leaves out all this space for heating. If I would have built it on top of the top of the bricks like that, I could have gone one, two, three, four, but I cut it six inches and I want it in the middle. On my other oven, I put the whole floor down and put the sides up like this. You know, I put the floor on top like that. So I had all four sides. But since I was trying to make this oven smaller, I went with that design right there. So I have one, two, three. So basically, yeah, it's going to come one, go all the way around, down, all the way back, down, and then out. 
Well, out probably around here. I'm a little worried. I, on my first oven, I, la I laid everything out and cut it brick by brick. I should have done that. That's one note. If you're doing this, lay out your bricks first, then cut them. I don't know how that's going to be. It shouldn't be too bad, but... So we know these are a half inch. So the rail has to be a half inch. If I calculate it right, we should be able to come up. I think it's uh, three quarters. Basically, we're right under. So we go an inch in the middle, a quarter, and a quarter. Inch in the middle, a quarter, and a quarter. So there's our first rail. It's good to kind of mark in between so you know where you're drilling and where you're not drilling so you don't drill on this side or on the bottom side. There's one rail. So we come up three quarters, then you go another quarter, another quarter. Now, if you're doing this metric, I'm not good with metric, so you might have to convert it. And I can't seem to find my ruler with the two measure with the, the centimeters on it and all that stuff. So. There's our next lane. Now you see on this one, this bottom one, we gotta draw a little hole there too because that's where the wire is going out. You know what I'll do? I'm gonna bring this line right here. I'm gonna bring this line down an inch. So that way we got three quarters to the bottom, an inch and a half, then like inch and five eighths. So they're evenly spread pretty much. And that way we got plenty of room at the top. Now, like I said, if you want to do it a different way, you can do it a different way. Let's transfer these here. Just to be on the safe side. I'm still trying to figure out how I'm going to do these center ones because I'm going to have to like set a stop and go down and then go across, bring it out, go down and go across, come out, you know, because I don't want to go off the edges because then that won't seal the back of it. So there we go so far. So we're coming in right here. Coming in here and going out here. Which means we're gonna have to make this right here kind of a circle. Wherever we want to make it. We want to keep it away from the front a little bit, so. But. This is where our turn's going to be, right here. This turn on the top. So you can see, we're coming all the way across. And then this one's going to be curved too at the bottom. These are basically just tracks for the drill to follow. And I'll be honest, if you don't have a drill press, I would think about getting the drill press before you've got or started working on a heat treat oven. Because the drill press is one of the most important parts of a shop. So, <laughs> there's that. Okay. So there we are. Starting up here, going across here, coming down here, back over here down here and out coming in here going out there and then i'll probably make it so it ties over here and then maybe put something on it so you can't touch it because that's one thing once these are hot and i don't mean hot as in heat i mean hot as in electrical hot you know you touch one of these wires and you're going to get zapped so you got to make sure whatever coming out is protected from so you can't just grab it but we'll get to that when we get to the electronics part. Now what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to put a quarter inch bit in the drill press, go down half an inch, cut this one lane, cut this out and come out here and then do it on all three and then I'll move up to half inch. So let's get over to the drill press. Since there's so much dust in that, I'm just going to do a time lapse. If you want to watch my older video where I redid, rebuilt my other heat treat oven, I do it all in slow motion and I go through the motions there. I just need 
to concentrate on what I'm doing because I've never done half inch. And also, since I'm just getting over being sick, I'm going to wear a respirator because all this dust isn't that good. All right, let's get over to the drill press. All right, so I got my drill press set. Half an inch. See, there's my half an inch mark. Boom. So that means I can, on the middle piece, I can just go out and then come back in on it. In fact, you know what? I'm going to do that one first with the quarter inch and the half inch. And then I'm going to set my whole table up so I can just hold it with both hands and go in. That's an idea. Instead of thinking backwards, let me do it the right way. <laughs> All right, so we'll just get this one done since it's some small runs. We'll do it with the quarter inch and then we'll do it with the half inch. And uh, I got my mask on and then the rest will be time lapse for the big pieces. Let me see something real quick. Yeah, once they're stretched, I'll go in foam. I think I'm just gonna put the half inch on for the long runs, and that way I can hold it steady and just go. This one I'm just hollowing out. You can probably hear I got the aerator on. You can go off your line a little bit because there'll be pins holding in your elements. Just try to keep it straight as possible, but you can see even like they're chipped out and stuff like that. That's fine. All right, time lapse time. So, you probably didn't see it in the time lapse, but my drill bits didn't go through the refractory cement, which is kind of a good thing, because that means the refractory cement's holding up. So let me see if a chisel will work. Huh. Nope, chisel won't work. <laughs> well, that's not a good idea. So we're not doing that. Oh man, that's all right. I'll just put these back together. I guess we can just stretch them over like this. Yeah, I'll just have to stretch it over. So there's a lesson learned. Do not put the bricks together with the refractory cement before you lay out your lines and drill them. I did that on my first one, I should have remembered. But that's all right. We gotta break out the refractory cement and get all this done anyway. So let me get this back on and uh, the rest is just gonna be putting the refractory cement back on. All right, so we need to pull out the refractory cement anyway. We'll put this one back together. And we got to get all three of these lined up and synced in and all that stuff. So let's get out the uh, refractory cement. This is what happens when you don't work in the shop for a week. Everything gets out of place and you can't find anything. <laughs> oh, man. I guess I'll use this, this will work.
cut a piece of wood six inches so I can put this clamp on and have it even. All right, I'm just gonna leave that brick in there or this piece of wood in there. It's the same uh, from the front to the back. It's the same gap, top and bottom. So we should be about even. You just clean up in here. Get everything laid out and tidied up. <clears throat> smoothed out filled in man when you're sick and come back to work first day is rough <laughs> I've been skipping a lot of steps I had a feeling when I started this by by putting these together before cutting them out that these things would be a problem but I could pull these things over so it shouldn't be that big of a problem well, now all you guys know to lay it out and cut it before you uh, put it together. <laughs> or you'll be fighting it like this. I'm glad I drilled those holes. I almost forgot that part. Drilling the holes, you can see one comes out here and one comes out at the bottom. I'm going to have to take some sandpaper and sand this back. It's sticking over a little bit because of all these seams. But that's alright. At least we know it's sticking over the exact same on both sides. So we're pretty even. I almost forgot the seal on the sides. Put the stuff on the sides and back here, but we're good. So I think that's about it. I was editing it, we're already at 18 minutes. I've been actually working on some knives and stuff while the heat treat oven dried. So I got this done. I got this to the point where it's hand sanded pretty good. I mean, man, whew, that feels good in the hand. Yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah, man. Can't wait to finish this one up and get the handles glued on. This is the one for Steve's knife and I'm kind of made it too small so I put a black liner on it so I think what I'll do the next video is get all these handles all shaped up and then we'll put them we'll epoxy the handles on and get these finished up. Then the only thing left is to shape this and then it's all hand sanding from there. So that might be just a short video for Saturday and I'm gonna be working on the oven too. Because all we got left is the elements and uh, the electrical. The door and all that stuff I'm going to have to do separate. Because that's a bunch of welding. But at least it'll get you to the point where you can get all the elements in. And all the electronics hooked up and it running. So that's about it for now. I got Amazon links on my website which is up here. And down below in the description with knives and shirts like this. Like it if you like it. Dislike if you don't. Subscribe if you want to come back and join the community. Hit the little bell and all that good stuff. <laughs> all right. Thanks for the support. Hope everyone's having a great day. And as always, take it easy.